And then what should we plug in for delta t? Uh, I guess we don't know delta t, do we? So we'll just plug in delta t here. You could do that. However, first of all, remember that um, we don't have to translate into Kelvins because we're working with delta t. So you could plug in. You could just plug in t final minus 10 degrees Celsius since we're working with delta t. We're not actually going to do that, but yeah, you could do this. By the way, notice that this was in Kelvins, but it doesn't matter because Kelvins and Celsius are the same for delta t. A change in temperature in Kelvin is the same as the temperature in Celsius. So um, we might as well just put this into Celsius here. It's the same thing because we're working with delta t. All right, now even though you could do this, this is probably not the best approach for this particular problem. Uh, actually, maybe that actually would be, be good practice for the problems that we're going to be doing. Actually, you know, now that I think about it, um, we, uh, we, we need to start getting used to doing this. So yeah, let, let's actually do this. OK. All right, so what should we do now? Well, first of all, can you see any units that we can simplify? Um, kilograms or pounds. Yeah. And let's just do any calculations we can. So are there any calculations we can do right now? Uh, 3 times 4184. 41, is it 4184? Oh, yeah, I wrote down the wrong thing on the board. On the right and left hand side, I guess I should have written joules. 20,000 joules. So this is joules over here. And then on the right hand side, we got 12,552 joules. Yeah, the units are just going to confuse us. Let's take the units out. Since we're using all consistent units, the units shouldn't bother. Oh uh, yeah, this is so much simpler without the units. All right, so when we take out the units, we get this. All right, what's the next thing we can do to simplify the right-hand side? Uh, divide uh, both sides by both Okay, good. Actually, that's better than what I was going to do. I was going to use the distributive law and multiply by 12, but actually it's better just to divide both sides. That'll get rid of that. All right, so what do we get when we do that? Five nine. What would be the units on that? Celsius or Kelvin? Which one? Um, Kelvin, because that's standard. But the change doesn't doesn't matter if it's the same change, right? Looks like we're getting confused about that. Uh, let's take our time to think that through. Okay, what so what temperature do we plug in? Ten, ten degrees Celsius. Ten degrees Celsius. So so this must be in Celsius. Okay. Um, so this ended up in Celsius over here, 11.59 degrees Celsius. Um, so you can use either Celsius or Kelvin here because we're working with delta T. Uh, but you have to be consistent about it. If you start off working with Celsius, you have to stick with Celsius. Or if you start off with Kelvin, you have to stick with Kelvin. So here we've got 11.59 degrees Celsius. Um, so actually it looks like I exaggerated on the board here. We're not, the temperature is not going up very much. The temperature is really only going up a little bit. But our final temperature here would be 11. 0.59 degrees Celsius. Okay. Okay, that's a very important type of problem. So hopefully you have that in your notes and you'll go back and redo it. Uh, so that's how we use this. How did we know to use this formula? Because we were in the temperature change region. Um, if we were in a phase change region, we would use this formula over here. Um, so what does this 4184 mean? What were the units on the 4184 again? Oh, um, joules over kilograms times Kelvin. How could we interpret this? Well, remember this is the specific heat of water. Remember a good way to interpret units, if there's units on the bottom of a fraction, is to put a 1 in front of them. 
and here we have two units on the bottom. So let's put a one in front of this as well. After all, putting the one in doesn't change things. What does this mean? It means that if you've got a kilogram of water and you want to increase its temperature by one degree Kelvin, you've got to add 4148 joules. So it's good to have an interpretation of what the specific heat tells you. So putting a one on the bottom of a fraction really helps us to interpret these complicated units. This is telling us that if we've got one kilogram of water and we want to raise its temperature by one Kelvin, this is how much energy it would take. 4148 joules. This is why I said before that this tells us how hard it is to raise the temperature. Because if this was a bigger number, it would mean it would take more heat to raise the temperature by one degree Kelvin. We didn't actually have to think through that logic, I guess, when we were just plugging into the formula, but it really helps to have a little intuition for what C is telling us. Um, so this is telling us again how much energy it would take to raise one kilogram of the substance one degree Kelvin. So if we wanted to raise it by two degrees Kelvin, it would take twice as much energy. Or, if we wanted to raise it by one degree Kelvin and we had two kilograms, it would take twice as much energy. Clearly, the more mass you have, the more energy it takes to raise the temperature. Okay, so that's the basic interpretation of the specific heat. How much heat it takes to raise the temperature of one kilogram of that specific substance by one degree Kelvin. Time flies. All right, so uh, still some, a lot of important uh, stuff to go over here. So. One thing to notice in these equations here is, uh, notice that in this equation, I put a big fat dot over the Q, whereas in this equation, I didn't put a dot. And we know the significance of that is when, the dot, when we put in the dot, you know, I like to use that just for magnitudes. So this formula just tells us the magnitude of the heat when you're changing phase. Whereas this formula actually tells you um, the signs as well. Remember that when we used this formula, we actually plugged in positive 20,000 because we were actually adding heat. If we'd been removing heat, we would put in negative 20,000. But the changing phase equation is just in terms of magnitudes. So you'd have to put in the sign yourself. So let's see how that would work. Let's say that you wanted to go from here to here. So this would be your initial point, and this would be your final point. Well, how do you do that? By adding heat or removing heat? So would Q be positive or negative? Yeah. So you would use this formula to figure out a number for Q. But then you would know on your own that Q would be positive. Or on the other hand, let's say we're going from here to here. Are we adding heat or removing heat? So would Q be positive or negative? So this formula would just give you a number for Q, and then we'd have to tag on a negative sign, because we know we're removing heat. All right, so let's see how we would use this formula here. 